Hello YouTube, Dave here again. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Starfinder Alien Archive 4. Uh, at the time that I'm recording this, this is the most recent Starfinder book to come out. Uh, I just received this the uh, just a few days ago. Um, I actually end up, this was a book that I ended up purchasing myself. Um, however, um, I am still, you know, I was uh, really excited to get it. Um, I love the Alien Archive books and I suspect this one's going to be uh, no different. I mean, whenever you just get you know new monster books, they're they're always um, they're always great to, to go through. So we're gonna flip through this, sort of see what things uh, we have in here, what kind of uh, disturbing or unique looking creatures. I mean, you can already see from the cover here, we've got some unique things. We have also a robot dragon, which is just awesome. Um, and this thing, I don't know what it is, but I, I want one. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and take a look, shall we? So. On the back, it says, Aliens Among Us. Aliens are everywhere in the universe of the Starfinder role-playing game. Their intent ranging from peaceful to uh, pernicious. Not a word you see very often on the back of RPG books. Uh, from robot dragons, which we saw on the cover, uh, to crystal-infused humanoids and polyphonic gels to sun-skimming beetles, uh, the creatures in this codex will challenge adventurers no matter what strange worlds they're exploring. Uh, what's more, player rules for a variety of species uh, let the players not just uh, fight aliens, but be them. Inside this book, you'll find the following. Uh, nearly 100 uncanny lifeforms, both classic and new, from the bat-like Groith um, and horrifying Brain Collector, which was in like the Pathfinder uh, bestiary books as well, uh, to the vengeful uh, Endling and the dreaded uh, Plasmalisk. Uh, a dozen races with full player rules, letting you play everything from a fungus uplifted animal to a humanoid made of magical coral. New alien technology to help give your character an edge, including armor, weapons, magic items, and more, and new rules for grafting the strange physical traits of other species onto your own character, uh, creating a staggering array of customization options. Uh, the retail price on this book is $39.99 US. Uh, the Canadian price is you probably, like I said, it's usually about $10 or so more uh, for these types of books, so it's probably around $49.99. Um, but uh, let's just go ahead and see what we got on the inside here. Of course, we have our Packed World system, which is uh, sort of a standard for all the books except for the um, the Near Space book, which had the Vescarium, which is cool to see. You receive our index, or table of contents with our list of creatures, uh, the overview, which gives you sort of just a quick, you know, at a quick glance, you can identify what their primary abilities might be. So if you've got like the fist icon here, they're a combatant. If it's the big brain, they're an expert. And if it's the hand holding up like fire in the middle of it, uh, they're typically uh, have like spellcaster type abilities. So here we go. Now, I'm going to be completely and totally honest. Um, I suck at pronouncing fantasy names to begin with. So we're just going to sort of flip through this um, in general and uh, just see what we got here. I might try to pronounce a few of these, but uh, honestly, I'm not going to do too much of it because it's going to be bad. And if I've learned one thing is that people are really quick to correct the pronunciation that you made of a fantasy name that was made up to begin with. So anyway, uh, so here we have, we'll try this one, because uh, this one doesn't seem too bad. So we have the um, Agathian. Uh, so these look like they're sort of, um, well, animalistic humanoids. We have this guy here with the forearm. Uh, the baboon type character sort of reminds me of the Sharkaz or uh, from uh, Sharkus from the Pathfinder game that I'm going, currently going through. Enlightened Medicinals, uh, as an extension of the supernatural healing abilities, they develop specialized medicines infused with the holy properties of Nirvana. Uh, so they follow the rules for medicinals on the... Okay, cool. Animated Quartz Swarm, so that's pretty cool. We have the Quartz Refractor Armor Upgrades, which look like rupees from The Legend of Zelda, so that's something that I appreciate. You know, we got the 1, 5, <laughs> 20, and and uh, 50 rupees there, but they're obviously uh, mean something different in, in this book, but that's fine. Uh, error book, so far not so bad. Um, Astriapi, I know I said I wasn't gonna do this, and I still find myself doing it, but here we have one, 
an example of one of the monsters in this book, or one of the aliens that are archived in this book, uh, that actually gives you the uh, racial traits so that you can actually play them as a player character, which all of the Alien Archive books have. And when I was running my Starfinder game at my local game store, um, I think everyone except for one of the players was playing an alien species from one of the Alien Archive books. Uh, so it, it's, it is a popular uh, feature of these books, which is great. And again, there's just some fantastic uh, artwork at play here. Some very imaginative things here. Here we have the brain collectors. I said I think these were in the Pathfinder game as well. And we got the, the guy there sort of stuck on the back of the person's head. A carrion wheel. Oh, with the new spell, in flame. So that must be the effects of the spell there. The cloud ray. Uh, another species with a player character race option, uh, Copaxi. So these are, these must be the, are these? Oh, these are the coral based humanoids, okay. And that must be what's also on the cover there as well. So that's kind of cool. The daemon, uh, so we have different types here, including the <laughs> uh, ones connected to what looks like virtual reality, which is kind of interesting. So if you're in virtual reality games, they may haunt you there. The dawn beetles. Okay, that I, I do not I do not like the Deadfall Stalker, so I'm just gonna move on right away. They do have the singularity cannon, so we do have um, a magic or not a magic item, but a, a new type of weapon that you can use. So heavy weapon requires two hands. Um, starts level five, is level fifteen or nineteen. Uh, gets all the way up to six d10 bludgeoning damage, uh, with a special effect that it can explode in ten feet uh, radius. So yeah, interesting stuff. Uh, elementals. We have immense elemental, titanic, gigantic. So these are these look like they're actually starship size because it mentions tiers, uh, which is how starships are. It's sort of the tiers are basically the challenge ratings uh, for ship combat. So these are meant for that. It appears uh, elemental starship crafts. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. Um, I've always liked the idea of having um, you know a star uh, like a space battle with this colossal like living creature. And here we have our endlings, N two colonies. That's pretty awesome looking. Uh, Epochocyte, which has a new spell, digital shield. They kind of look like they're wearing like a goblin's head for like a, a helmet. I don't know, it's just kind of weird. The different two tone thing that they got there. Grey goo. Not to be confused with the black goo, which is a different thing altogether. Uh, Groith. Hadragon, another uh, option with player character um, race options for you. Harpy Jasmine, so this is a, basically a plant, an evil plant. Not even going to try that one. Hulsa. And again, it's cool that a lot of these, like, if you can make something from them, uh, it actually gives you that information, like, right there um, in their description, which, again, I think is actually really just kind of cool that they have a little bit of everything here. Uh, Ixtongi, another player character possibility. Kind of remind me almost like a hammerhead shark head, kind of weird, but cool. These guys are interesting. They just have one central, like, sort of sticky-looking frog leg. Uh, but you can play them as a player character. Uh, the Kion, or Kion. Kulon. Kyrenta, or Kyrenta. Basically evil-looking space moths with guns, which is, like... Simultaneously adorable and terrifying. These things are just sort of gross looking. Uh, the click harp. Lacunal collector. Maybe some of them have graphs again if you wanted to uh, modify your character with that. Many mind or many, many mean one, many mean one. Uh, 
silicone mummy. That's kind of neat. Oh, there's those guys from the cover. Oh, because they are a lot more fish-like than I was led to believe by the cover. Well, I guess you kind of see them going into the water there, so. Uh, so they're the Mirzalat. Yeah, I kind of like that. Oh, uh, man, that's, that's off-putting. Uh, Ossifern. Planisher. Plasmalisk. There's a Plasmalisk. CR14. Ionizing Gaze. So this is sort of like a evil, bigger version of like a Space Basilisk. Polyphonic Gel. Protein. So these things are kind of interesting. Um, I was running a home game of the um, Dawn of Flame Adventure Path. Again, it sort of fell apart a little bit. Um, but um, I, when, when I was running, I was running the first chapter there, and there was this uh, the protean uh, in the uh, in the engine of the the ship that the characters come across, and <clears throat> the group didn't want to fight it, um, and it believed itself to be a god, like it just had these sort of um, you know false beliefs that it was this godlike being, so um, the characters just sort of. All the characters except the players, except for one of them, went along with it, and so he became like this, you know, this this god who would just sort of like take credit for things that happened around him. It was a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed that. Uh, Psycho pump. Uh, yeah. Uh, the Q. Anyway, that those look like. You know, big black bunny eyes, but those are those are filled with teeth. So that's just again just a weird, just a weird thing. I guess they are eyes, but they have teeth around them. Just don't know about that. Uh, Radiation Drake. Some dinosaurs, basically space dinosaurs. Ravenous Drake. The robot dragon, which is really cool. All right, so this one. This is awesome. So the, the infiltration robot. Um, so look at that. Look at that. These things are, uh, they're, they're gosh dang terminators. And that is awesome. So you can sort of see, I'm just going to come a little closer here. So you can see that's got like the, uh, the robotic, um, like the, uh, the robotic face underneath the, uh, the fake skin there, which is really cool. And then this one is the T-1000, so it's sort of like this liquid. So yeah, so if you want to make a Terminator in your Starfinder game, then they are here. Now, you may want to work on the challenge earnings a little bit, but advancing creatures is nearly not that difficult in this system. Um, but it's just, I mean, they're, they're, they're freaking Terminators. And, uh, and, you know, that's awesome. I just, I love that. Sapien Purple Orb, that's pretty easy to pronounce, um, you know, pretty much tells it like it is. The Scene, which is an aberration, Ship Killer Bulb, and that is a weird thing. Um, the, okay, you know what, I, I'm not, I'm not going to even try that one. Um, Sombrian, Spectra, Star Metal Eater. That's pretty cool. Put some templates there. Storm Ghost. Supenga. That is just a weird. It's like a giant like flower sock eating a lizard sort of thing. That's what it looks like. I don't know. It's weird, but it's cool. Uh, Swamp Strider. Thermatrod. And again, you know, items that you can make from parts of its body. Not, not even going to attempt that one. Uh, what's with all the spider-looking things in this? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not, not going to pronounce that one either. Um, the Utesra. The Utesra. Oh, man, this looks cool. So the Vesporin, or Vasporin. Uh, it, it looks like a flying squirrel Cthulhu hybrid, and I absolutely adore it. Um, unfortunately, no options for it being a player character, which kind of sucks. But uh, I would, I would definitely want one as like a as a companion creature in my game. And then we got uh, just big old space whale, the warp stitcher. That's a pretty bizarre looking creature, but I love it. 
and the War Lanessi. Uh, another player character option as well. So again, cool stuff. And here we have our species graphs. So it gives you, um, you know, the, all the information that you need. So the charts here just tell you what level you have to be to, in order to qualify for the graft. So you have to be that level or above. Uh, the price and what system it affects. And uh, so you can't have multiple graphs onto one part of your body. Um, so it's sort of like magic item slots, if you sort of think about it in, uh, in those terms. <clears throat> but again, just, so, you know, uh, there's quite a bit of stuff in here. <laughs> and uh, so you have like defensive ball graft. That's... Don't know about that. Uh, balance graph, atmospheric uh, alteration graph, <clears throat> carbonic respiration graph. So these are sort of just the uh, oh, elven immunities graphs. That's pretty cool to have there. Grave touch graph. So there's a lot of different options you can have here. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so this, this is an option. I think something again that you should consider uh, introducing into your game uh, because it does give you um, customization options for your player characters. Uh, and here we have some more uh, like creature subtype graphs, uh, class graphs, and um, the graph templates, which you use typically use for um, for creatures, universal uh, creature rules. So have those sort of work. And yeah, um, we got some more of those. Our appendix, and then we have our D20 system license, and uh, an advertisement for the Starship Operations Manual, which is another great book as well. So that was my flip through of the Starfinder Alien Archive Four. And, I mean, these Alien Archive books are all fantastic. Uh, they really are. Um, you know, they give you a lot of unique, uh, innovative, um, creative creatures um, that you can use against your players. And the one thing I will say about Starfinder is that it's not likely that the player characters will sort of have that, you know, decades worth of knowledge of what creatures you're going up against. Like, for example, if you try to describe a kobold or a, um, a goblin, um, you know, they reach the point where the players just sort of clue in um, once they sort of hear at least enough about it. But man, you start describing the pictures of some of the creatures that you see in here. I mean, like the, the giant eyeball with just like a dozen or more hairy spider legs coming out of it. Um, they're not going to know what that is, and I, I kind of like that. It's, it, everything feels sort of fresh and unique, but uh, like I said, there's a lot of cool, interesting creatures in here. It's always great that there's also a lot of options um, in addition to just fighting the creatures, so if parts of them can be used to create something like a magic item or, well, not a magic item in, in Starfinder, but more like a, a hybrid item with technology or um, just, you know, you can use it for, you know, armor or grafting parts of them to your body. Uh, creating serums or concoctions or whatever it might be. It includes all that stuff in here, which is great. It's right with the, with the creature uh, information. So if they ask if there's something they can do with the bodies, if, if there's a entry for it there, then you can tell them exactly what it is, which is great. Um, and it's always nice to see uh, that several of these have the options for people to play them as player characters. So it does mean that, you know, each of these books has something to offer both game masters and players alike. Um, as a player, you don't necessarily need to own these books because there's not a ton of things that the, the race gives you in Starfinder versus maybe like Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Uh, so, you know, as long as the Game Master has the, the archives, for example, um, you know, you can let the players sort of look through or let them know which ones are available as player character races and, uh, and go from there. So I think this is, again, kind of a nice little, little added benefit to these books that they certainly didn't need to do, uh, but it's great that they did. Um, and this one with the graphs and everything, it's just, again, a nice, cool customization option. And I hope that each of the Alien Archives going forward has some sort of gimmick that they add to the game. Uh, for example, the Alien Archive 3 had, um, like, animal companions, basically, uh, included in that book. And the, the Alien Archive 4 has, like, all these different modifications and, and graphs that you can do. Uh, to customize your organic being. So again, really, really cool stuff here. So the Alien Archive books, um, in my opinion, always continue to impress. There's just a ton of great stuff in there. And if you are someone who is running um, the Starfinder role-playing game, then this is something that I do highly recommend, um, especially if you start getting into future um, adventure paths, because a lot of times they will use 
creatures from any of the previously released monster books that were available at the time they go into production. So, uh, you know, if the book's available, they may end up referencing just the book itself. So it's always nice to sort of have those on hand. But again, I don't think you're going to be disappointed with the options in here. And uh, what can I say? You've got robot dragons, you have flying squirrel Cthulhu's, and you have freaking Terminator. So if nothing else, that makes this book pretty awesome, in my opinion. Uh, let me know in the comments below if any of you have picked up the Alien Archive 4 uh, for your Starfinder game. What creatures have you used? Um, and uh, Or what options have the players taken for some of the new races that are uh, available in this book? I always love hearing you guys' uh, feedback and how you've been able to use these products. So it's always great to hear. Uh, anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time. Take care.